I would assist you, but since I cannot offer you a hand of flesh and blood, I bid it help to you. It really wasn't that easy getting back to my feet. But that was because my knees were shaking, which I hope you didn't notice. The night was taller than I'd expected, and his chain mail shimmered as if the moon itself had made the armor for him. He looked so glorious, just like the nights I had dreamt about when I was six years old, working at the brambles in our garden, imagining I was fighting dragons and giants with a sword that made me invincible, and wearing armor that protected me from all the things that frightened me. All the kids, dogs, a storm in the night, all my little sister's questions about when our father would be coming back. I managed to clumsy bow. I didn't know what else I was supposed to do. All I knew was that my fear was gone. Was it long be and wiped it off my soul? So, that was my turn. Now it's your turn. Do you have any questions? No questions. Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. oh, he's, he's starting to go to work. So, you know, that's very hard. This, as if you ask me, is your son or your daughter your favorite? <laughs> it's like I wrote 60 books in my life. There are picture books in there, and easy readers, and some really fat books, and then books like this. And I would say the favorite is always the one you're in. But then when I read from a book at that moment, that one is my favorite. So I cannot really say. It's really like, you know, a swarm of children all standing around me, printed children, that they're like, hey, pick me, pick me, I'm your favorite, I'm sure. <laughs> so, yeah. So I will not mention any names or the others will be offended. <laughs> <laughs> I became a book illustrator, and then when I was very bored by the stories they sent me, I became a writer. And suddenly realized, I guess that's what you're supposed to do, Cornelia. But I always tell children, believe me, sometimes you have to go the crooked ways. You will not know exactly what you will turn out to be or what you are supposed to be. I am the best example. What inspired you to write the series? Which one? The the ink series, that is a little complicated because many books I see a scene in my head or I see an image or I had an idea or I traveled somewhere and there it is, the book is there. With the ink books, it was a mix. First of all, I lived for three months with my husband and my daughter in Liguria, which is the north of Italy, in a tiny village. You have to imagine it is a village, 300 inhabitants, narrow alleyways from the Middle Ages, so you will never be able to squeeze a car through. Sometimes they do with their motorcycles, which is very scary. And you still see sometimes that they took the sheep out of the houses and drove them down the mountain. And I lived for three months in this place, and I thought, oh my god, it's like a time machine. You're, you're, you're back in another time. And I always remember that about Liguria, which is a part of Italy that is part tourism and beach and and then part mountains and very dark and medieval. So the scene was laid for the book, but I didn't know it. So 10 years later, I was like, hmm, I really would like to write a book about people who come out of books. Because we all know the feeling that the characters in books are sometimes more close to us than the people we know. Because the writer allows us to look into their hearts, which we all are very good at not allowing people. So in a way, the children here will all remember Harry Potter when they are 99 on their deathbed, but they may not remember the child sitting next to them, right? So I thought, how can I write about this feeling that they are real, that they are flesh and blood like us, that their story is told as maybe our book is told? So that was the beginning, and then suddenly all the ideas came together, but I was sure I write only one book. 
until I came on to the end of book one, and suddenly I thought, oh my god, I want to know when the dust finger gets back into his book, and I thought, no, 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 Cordelia, there are so many trilogies out there, you don't write another one. And then I thought, but I really would like to know. No, I have to be strict with myself. So I said, okay, you get two weeks, if in two weeks you come up with a number two plot, you are allowed to do it. And the story just came in as if it had been waiting. So I wrote number two. Number two had such a cool ending that I knew my readers would kill me if I don't write number three. So I was like, great. So what will happen in number three? Will it close? And luckily, the story closed the door after number three, as I had hoped it would. So you see, you got a glimpse into the life of a writer. You know, I just write what they tell me. Do you get your characters' feelings from like people you know? You know, I think we all do because we cannot really imagine anything that we haven't experienced ourselves. So I think what you do as a writer, you also find all those personalities in yourself. So let's say when I have 40 characters in a book, I think a little bit of myself is in each of them. So what I think is children have a very easy time to sort of shift their shape, right? The younger you are, the easier it is for you to imagine you're a dog, you're a cat, you'll fly on the wall, right? And children still understand that the world is one and that we all somehow belong together. Then the older you get, the more important you feel, and the more you feel, oh, that's just me, the one I see in the mirror. There's no nothing else. And the writer can escape that fate by being many people in a book which is the greatest happiness when you're writing a story. Is there any more? Yes? Um, in Ink Heart series, what character are you most attached to? <laughs> With Ink Heart, that's very, very hard. With all the other books, I mostly can say that in a second. With Thief Lord, I say Prosper. With Dragon Rider, I say Twiggler. But with Reckless, I say Fox. But with the Ink series, it's like an ensemble piece. So when I say dust finger, the same moment I think, oh no wait, Eleanor. Oh, oh no wait, Finalio, that's my alter ego. Oh, no, maybe it's the black brains. So I just go back and forth, and I think I really do love them all, but I'm not a writer who loves her villains. I try to make them really good, and really real, not artificial, but I don't like them. Yes. How did you get your characters' names? That's a very big task. What I do is mostly, some bring me names, like Dust Finger brought his name. I just knew what he's called. I felt sometimes as if he's standing behind me. But there are other characters, I have dictionaries for names all from all over the world. And I go through them and I wait for the goosebumps. Sometimes it doesn't happen for quite a while and I do an X for the character. And then at some point, you just think, Mm, that name tastes like him. Because, you know, I don't draw them. I don't show them to you, you know? So in a way, I mostly never portrait my main characters to give you the freedom to imagine them the way, the way you want. So I have to describe them with a name. So the name is of great, great importance. And then you sometimes have surprises, like I did with the thief Lord. I chose many Italian names. And then my Italian translator calls me and says, no, you know, some of these names don't work in Italian. And I said, what do you mean? If they don't work in Italian, they're Italian names. Yeah, she said, but you pick this one for a big boy, you know, heavy and tall. For us, it sounds tiny when you give him that name. So I have to change it. 